Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello and welcome to this episode of our program. This is Mike Saunders with Marketing Huddle. And today we have with us Mark Fidelman, who is with Fanatics Media. Welcome to the program, Mark. Thanks. Great to be here. Hey, so I um, love the concept or the name Fanatics Media. In fact, I use the phrase for my consulting firm. I'm a business strategist and a marketing fanatic, so I love that phrase. So tell us a little bit about Fanatics Media and uh, what you do. Yeah, I mean, essentially we focus on uh, three things at Fanatics Media. One is just straight digital marketing. I mean, that for us is a, uh, a necessary tool to have in anyone's uh, marketing toolbox. In fact, I think you'll see it increasingly take over the entire marketing suite. Two, it's about e-commerce um, and how you, know, you can increase sales online. And then three, it's about influencers. And I think today, you know, we, we're going to talk about how we're combining influencers and e-commerce, which is kind of the next evolution, I think, in influencer marketing as well as e-commerce. Yeah, you know, I was just at the Denver Digital Marketing Summit, and Gary V is was the keynote or one of them, and so was Ann Handley with the marketing props, and just really, really huge digital marketing is where it's at. And in fact, Gary V and many other people teach. Um, you know, it's kind of like the saying about, uh, I guess it was maybe Wayne Gretzky that said, you know, I don't skate to where the puck is, but where the puck is going. Well, where are we going in digital marketing? And, you know, all the hubbub around, you know, mobile, and you see all the stats around mobile and, and digital. You can't just email for email's sake. You have to email knowing that huge, I mean, what, 50, 55, 60% of the people are reading their emails on their phone, and that's obvious, but you have to make sure it's formatted for the phone and how about you know um, you know virtual reality? How about Snapchat? So all of those things play into it. So yeah, digital marketing is just where it's not where things are going. It's like if you're not even on board, then you're way behind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could not have said it better myself. You know, one thing that Gary Vee said, which I thought was so awesome, and I wrote it down, and then I Googled it, and apparently he, that's on a lot of his most more recent interviews, he's really hitting this topic hard, is uh, attention. And he says he feels like he day trades on attention, you know, because you get this day trade mentality of, I just want to make these little mini slices of profit, and, and that's how day traders work. Well, if if we can day trade and get little slices of people's attention, because you can't expect to get more. You know, I mean, I feel like gone are the days of, you know, let's attend this two-hour webinar. Forget that. N- no one's going to be there and be engaged for, you know, that period of time. And, you know, back in the day, they used to say you've got two or three seconds on your uh, uh, website for people to grab their attention. You know, uh, that probably still is the case. But um, what do you what are your thoughts on attention and staying in front of that? Yeah, I don't necessarily look at it as day trading for attention, although certainly I can understand what Gary's talking about. It is, you know, people are just inundated with information and they've got their own filter set up and they've got their own things they, they want to pay attention to and they're interested in. Um, for me, it's more about getting them into a community or getting them to follow a storyline that we've created for for a, uh, one of our clients and just keeping them there like a great book. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of how we look at it is, yes, you got to get their attention, but we feel like if you've put together a good storyline, you've put together a good campaign that really draws them in, gets them to participate, then, you know, they're in it for at least, you know, a short period of time and you're not competing because you've already locked them into this storyline. You're not competing with all these little messages that are coming up from all the different uh, individuals and companies that are out there. Well, you know, it's interesting, too, is kind of like in copywriting, you, you're taught, you know, you create a headline to capture enough attention so they read the sub-headline. Then you create the first paragraph to be engaging enough that they want to read uh, the next paragraph and, and so on. Well, that's 
very what you were saying is made me think of that because that's really what we're dealing with in attention and copy and marketing and anything because people are busy you know what's going to take to get my attention to get your attention and and then you can't then expect to have a really dumpy looking website and really you know elementary copy um, so let's let's get over and talk about influencers and what that looks like what you what your definition of that is and then what kind of um, uh, advice that you advise your clients to start with because if you once you understand um, how to tap into that where do you start yeah I think it's an excellent segue too though that you brought uh, um, through this introduction is that you know when you look at influencers and our definition is you know these are the people that truly do influence your target audience so it's going to be different for every organization every company you know and, and individual uh, and so when you look at these influencers they already have the attention of your target audience mm-hmm. and so they've already got the attention because they've been able to resonate with them usually emotionally or maybe it's information but there's some reason why they keep these people's attention and that's why we like to partner with them is if we can then build a story or at least uh, be a part of a story that the influencer is already telling or they're already there's some kind of a, a theme that, that that resonates with that influencer's audience we want to plug ourselves or our clients into those those storylines and then participate that way they already have the audience you know to, to build an audience like that could be very complicated mm-hmm. and what we found is you know, the true powerhouse influencers are, are usually unicorns. It's very difficult to, to, to replicate what some of these people have done, especially on YouTube. So why not partner with them? Why not to get them, give them what they want and uh, in return, since they already know how to communicate properly and over a long period of time with, these, with your target customers, you know, um, work with them as opposed to trying to create, you know, your typical advertising campaign. And the and, results show and, and, it. I mean, the results are anywhere from six to 12 times greater than other traditional, even digital marketing uh, mm-hmm. efforts that we have uh, going at the same time. But guess what? I am certain you would not say only do influencer marketing, disregard traditional and digital. So it has to be a nice synergy between um, all of that. It really does. I mean, influencer marketing is only one aspect of what you're doing and, you know, in a marketing effort. So there's the branding, there's Facebook, which is a fantastic place to generate leads. But, uh, you know, I, I see influencer marketing as either permeating all of that or at least important aspects of it. Let's take a Facebook uh, campaign, for example. I think most marketers will agree Facebook and maybe Google are the best places for advertising. But I'll argue if you include an influencer in that advertising campaign, even if it's just a short video or their face on a a banner, it'll do much better than if you do some kind of a generic ad or generic video that you've produced as a corporation. Now, it depends on the corporation. I'm just saying for most organizations, the fact that you're incorporating an influencer into that advertising campaign on Facebook or Google is a positive. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and it really is interesting, a point that you made um, it made me think of something that I've taught clients for years and years, which is once you know your competitive advantage and your target audience, now you have to go to these strategic alliances, and we can insert the word influencer there, because they already have the no like, and trust factor with your target audience. And whether it's a shared um, uh, strategic alliance where someone sells to your same target audience but sells completely different than what you sell to, or a true influencer where they may not even have a service or product they're you know, wanting from that target audience. It's just that they have that influence over them. So what a, a strong, strong alliance that way, um, because it really does um, – tie into that uh, know, like, and trust. Um, Have you done any research or do you see anything where it comes back to you could point to like the old uh, uh, saying, what's in it for me? You know, everyone's favorite radio station is what's in it for me. How much does that play into attracting or working with influencers? Well, if you're talking about what's in it for me for the the organization or for the influencer? For the influencer, because the organization, obviously, I want that influencer to, you know, help me out. But for the influencer, what do they get out of the relationship? 
Well, I mean, typically and, and increasingly, they're going to get paid. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so that's that's usually what's in it for them. I think on B two B, you know, you don't really need to pay most B two B influencers. But when it comes to B two C, especially the ones we're working with, uh, they want to be compensated for creating content, and mm-hmm. there's no. Uh, and, and distribution. Essentially, what you're paying for is them creating content distribution. So, is there a, a example you can point to without mentioning names or brands? But um, you know, what would it look like uh, for an influencer to uh, what's, a, what's a campaign? What would that look like? Yeah. So uh, we're doing one for a major fast food chain right now, and we've hired about 40 very influential people on YouTube to create. Uh, their own variation on a theme that we've come up with. So we said, here's the theme, here are the talking points. We're not going to direct you as to what you want to put out there, but we want you to come up with some cool campaigns that we know your audience is going to like. And with a call to action, you know, here's a coupon or if you sign up for our loyalty club and, you know, we're running those and I think we're halfway through the campaign and they're doing phenomenal. I mean, this chain's never seen anything like it. Mm. And it's not that I'm an expert or I'm a genius. It's that the influencers already know, you know, how to entertain and educate yep. and get their audience to act, especially on a channel like YouTube where, you know, video probably resonates better than any other form of content right now. Well, if you tried to script the influencers, it would, it would, I would venture to say that you would have half the, the benefit, if that, because like you said, they know their audience, they know how to communicate in written or video or audio format, and you just need to say, hey, here's the lines, you know, don't go too far outside of them, but, you know, make it your own. And the problem is, I would, I would wonder that a lot of people like yourself or brands would go, we want the influencer to say this exactly, and, and, and that would probably be a struggle. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, anything that's scripted. If I read somebody else's script, it just doesn't come across as mm-hmm. authentic. I don't know how you are, but uh, you really want to, I mean, you've researched them, ho- hopefully. If you're doing this on your own, which I don't recommend for the first time, but if you are, you know, you've, you've done the research, you know what the type of things that they're going to do and say, and if they're not a good fit for your brand, then don't hire them. But if they are, uh, then you pretty much know how they're going to act. So you don't want to script them out. You just want to give them, here are the things that we want to cover. Try to incorporate this into whatever that you're going to do. Here's the call to action. Here's where we want the call to action, you know, usually in the middle and the end of the, the video and also in the description. And just let them be creative. I mean, that's what they're known for, and that's how they built their audience in the first place. And really just get out of their way. Now, I typically like to have something, you know, towards in a contract that says I have a right of, of last refusal where we could say it's not, you know, we're not going live with this video. We'll pay you for your time, but that's about it. Uh, so that uh, that's something that we build in as a safeguard if you're worried because if they color, colored outside the lines too far, then you need to have a, a safety net. For sure. Yeah. So it, it makes me think uh, of of uh, product placement. How how does influencer marketing relate to product placement? Because in reality, it's very similar. But product placement is on you know TV and and movies. Which interestingly enough, recently I have seen uh, two shows that I've watched where the characters have said just in passing, "Oh, you're just so tired, get an Uber," or hey, "Oh no, don't worry, I Ubered over here." And it's just so just like in the com- it's not like you know the camera focusing in on a logo or they're holding up you know a, a product. It's just in conversation and it's just so seamless. Do you feel like influencer marketing is very, very similar to, you know, uh, product placement? No, I I don't really, and I don't know how effective product placement is, and I I don't really know if anyone knows how how effective that is because you can't measure it, really. Exactly. So we typically don't do anything we don't measure. So we will place products and have an influencer talk about it. Um, or at least have it in their video, but it's clickable. You know, with YouTube, mm-hmm. anything can be clickable in a video. Uh, so we know what the the impact is. But uh, I don't like product placements for the sake of product placements. I want to make sure it can be measured and then it's done in a way where uh, it just fits into the storyline, of course, but uh, also there's going to be some benefit to our clients. Yeah, it's really uh, – I, I just love the whole concept of – 
influencer marketing. Recently on the show, I interviewed the CEO of Open Sponsorship, and that's a company that connects brands to the world's largest network of sponsorship opportunities in the sports world. So, and it, and it, the interesting thing is. It could be some of these like last minute uh, deals, like where she had uh, had mentioned that there was a golf match coming up, and they heard that one of the top players had just made it to the last round, and they had a spot on their sleeve of their shirt yeah. that would be open, and they shot out a notice to all their people and said, "Hey, who wants?" or whatever they did, but you know, it's like within hours, it was like, "Yep, we want this, and we want it on the sleeve," and then like the next day, the brand is watching this player in the final round of whatever it was, the U.S. Open, and there's their you know logo right on their sleeve, and you know there's a fee and the cost and all that, but it's not as much as if you were to go and do some major long-term campaign. So it was really, an, uh, that's influencer marketing in the sports world, um, but they just got a really neat platform. So what are you seeing as the future of what's the, the next step? Uh, what's influencer marketing 2.0? Yeah, great question. I think it, uh, it'll be multiple multiple uh, paths and the one we're pursuing of course is influencer commerce meaning you know you'll see brands or you'll see the influencer themselves create their own white labeled products and sell them on their own and we're really focused on kind of bringing that to the to fruition so it's, right now you'll see influential people sell t-shirts in their own uh, let's say store but they're not marketers right or they're marketers but they're not focused on e-commerce and so we're comp- combining influencers in, in e-commerce and really coming out a way for them to sell their own products in a store on Amazon, on uh, AliExpress, all in, on eBay, and making it super easy for them. And, you yeah, know, that's pretty influencers interesting are selling everybody else's products. So yeah. what we're, we're telling them to do is, hey, either create your own products and brand them or partner with another organization that wants to bring a product to, to market. Or, or would this would this be a good way to to kind of prime the pump per se? You get that influencer to participate in a campaign, you know, whatever the product may be, and then you report back to them the metrics of that and say, "Wow, the engagement was high for this." Um, what if we white labeled, or what if we created and then took it to the next level so that the next campaign would be your product and you're getting a bigger slice of the pie rather than just the whatever fee or the commission or whatnot. Yeah, I mean, that's a nice variation of that. We're already doing that with uh, Ellie Golding, if you're familiar with her. She's a singer out of the UK, pretty popular, always in the top 40. And she's created her own uh, nutrition bar. And uh, so she's partnered with one of our clients. She's created her own nutrition bar, and that's exactly what she's doing. Is She's profiting from the bar and also um, making money by uh, selling her own, let's say, it's not really white labeled, but it's, uh, her brand on a bar uh, controlled by one of our clients. Yeah. I mean, that's that's probably influencer marketing 4.0, not even 2.0. <laughs> that's really awesome. Good. Well, any uh, any final thoughts that you have um, on the topic? I, mean, I think we really could talk for about another four and a half hours, but um, what's, a, what's kind of like a summary, uh, um, drop the mic kind of a statement on influencer marketing for a brand to consider? Well, you know, for me, it's it's... Uh, confusing why more brands aren't participating in influencer marketing. I know it's like the big term of this year for us. It's been for the last couple of years. I really think, though, that you've got to follow a, a process. And you talk about, we could talk for 40 more minutes on this. We could easily do that. Uh, but there is a certain process that you go through in order to make sure you've got the right influencer and you're doing it the right way and that you're ensuring that the results are going to be what you're expecting. And there is a way of almost forecasting what those results will be just by following this this uh, uh, process that we've laid out. Yeah. Uh, strategy results um, have to be predicated by what's a plan, and then you got to follow it. So love it. What's the best way that people can uh, learn more about your firm? Yeah, I would go to fanaticsmedia.com. That's the easiest way to do that. And uh, if you want to look me up, I have also uh, write for Forbes. You could follow some of the things that we're doing here. And then we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash fanatics media, where I talk about everything that we've talked on this podcast and a whole lot more. Awesome. Well, Mark, thank you so much for your time. It was wonderful getting to know you. Likewise. Thank you for having me. 
Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.